watch me grow Always active, never keep it on the low I'm trying to eat it with my bros, but I might eat alone Only focused on the present, cause the future unknown Watch me What's going on everybody? You're tuned in to another episode of the Peaceful Leaders Podcast with your host, Lizzie the Gifted, where I bring you a brand new episode every single week documenting my journey as an entrepreneurial musician. I'm very excited about today's episode. This is going to be the second episode of the Peaceful Leaders Podcast and what we're going to be doing is talking about controlling what you can control. Control what you can control. All right, before we start though, obviously want to remind you, if you're enjoying what you're watching, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video and comment. That helps a lot. If you're listening to this as a podcast episode, do me a favor, share this with somebody, leave a comment and a review. That would literally help a lot. It would help grow everything. I'm pretty much doing this for free just because I want to impact people. So if you could just help me out by doing those things, that'd be awesome and I appreciate you a lot. So, Let's get into it. Controlling what you can control. So what do I mean by that? A lot of times when things don't go right, things go wrong, we fail, we go through frustrations, what we want to do is blame. It's very easy to just blame other people, external forces, the government, the weather, this person, that person, whatever it is. Okay. And the problem with that is you can't fix it. That's the biggest issue. You can't fix it. If something happened that went wrong and you blame somebody else, nothing you can do about it. Now you're stuck. You can't fix it. You can't learn from it. You can't fix it the next time. And boy, do I have a lot of examples of that. And I want to give you one. I want to share a story with you. I love stories. And I love telling them. I love hearing them. So I want to give you a story. Okay. So recently, back in September. So we're in March of 2022, currently recording the episode. We're probably going to be, you'll probably be watching it. It's going to be May, but, or April or May or something, but we're around, you know, first quarter of 2022 and I had started, restarted my marketing agency, Prophecy Media, back in September of 2021. I was doing my thing, pivoted, started working with realtors, ended up having another team member come on. I had a team member come on, you, you'd call it a media buyer, means somebody who basically runs the Facebook ads and all that stuff for your clients. Well, we were doing fine. Things kind of were working really well. I had gotten a, a bunch of sales in one one month. I actually closed three clients in a week in January, which was awesome. I was like, wow, this is a hot streak. Me and him were killing it. The problem was I had listened. This is going to sound like blaming, but I had listened to him on what exactly the offer should be because I was like, dude, I don't even know how to run all this stuff. Like, You know how to run it. You're experienced. Help me figure out what we should do and what you are capable of doing. And he's like, all right, well, we can do this, this, and this. It's like, all right, great. This is what we're going to sell people on. I sold people on it. He couldn't deliver on that. I couldn't deliver on that. So the deal was if we don't deliver the results, we'll work for you for free for the next month. That was the deal. Well, didn't deliver results for any of those three clients. Really pissed me off, but that's okay. I said, I'm going to take ownership. We're going to work for free for the next month. Next month comes around. He ghosts me. Yikes. He ghosts me, doesn't answer any of my texts. We did get in contact once and he's like, don't worry, bro, I'm gonna be way more responsive. That was a lie. We ended up literally just, he just completely ghosted me. I'm like, oh shit. I got people who paid me. I have a promise to fulfill to them. How do I fulfill this promise? I could have gone to all of my clients and totally blamed him, but I didn't because it's my responsibility. It's my fault that that happened. It sucks. It sucks. You know, I fucking hate the guy. I really want to slap him across the face, but I can't do that. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do that. And that's not going to help anything even if I did do that. The point is, in life and in business, you got to take control of everything. That's the toughest part about being a CEO, an entrepreneur, is doing, like, you have to take all that responsibility. And... So it happened. So you've got to just control what you, so what can I do now and what can I do going forward? First of all, no matter what, pick the right people to work with. That's a, that's a no brainer. I should have been a no brainer from before, but the other thing too is make like, I think in business specifically, make sure you can deliver what it is you're going to promise people. But this is a big, but that doesn't mean that you should be hesitant and that doesn't mean you should be resistant to making a big promise. Make the promise first, then go figure out how you're going to get that promise delivered. 
in the marketing world with marketing agencies. Market sophistication is at an all-time high. Like, and it always will be. It's always just going to get higher. But what I mean by that is like, marketing agencies are able to sell and promise like very valuable things. Like the agency I currently work for and the guy that I work with, what we're able to do for our clients is, it's like amazing. What we're actually able to do, by the way, like we're actually able to deliver our promises, not like I was able to do for mine, but what we're able to do, we can deliver. We do it all the time. It's a very high ticket item and it's like, wow, like that's hard to compete with. But we had to because that's what those other marketing agencies that are doing stuff that's like that. And you don't want to scale back your promise because you can't deliver it. You need to go figure out how to deliver what you really need to to close these clients and then sell them on it. Um, with music, like if you're a musician, you gotta stand behind your product. Like you need to be like, yo, this is the hottest song of the year. Like every song you put out, like you should feel like, yo, this is the one right here. Like, and you're promoting it like, yo, you need to come listen to this song. This song's gonna change your day. This song's gonna change your life. Like this song's gonna be like, you're gonna love this song, guarantee it. And like, I guarantee if you don't love this song, like don't ever listen to me again. Like unfollow me, like I'm cool with it. You know, like you gotta have that kind of belief in what you do and just control what you can control. Like everything else, like that's the scariest thing about being an entrepreneur is a lot of things will fall back on you that you can't control. It's so scary. So scary. It's so scary. But it's the most rewarding thing that when you pick the right people, when you pick the right folks, when you work with the right folks, good stuff happens. You're like, oh yeah, this is worth it. Same thing with music, same thing with anything. It's a difficult journey to be on, to be an entrepreneur. It's like really hard. And I don't think I have an amazing sense of what the whole world is talking about. Like, I don't think I have a great pulse on the world because I'm kind of just in my own zone and doing my own thing. I, but I still think that the word entrepreneur sounds cool. And I think, I think it's like a trendy like buzzword still. I, but I, I somewhat think that that word's going away because if you know any entrepreneurs, or you yourself are an entrepreneur, you realize that it's not like cool to be an entrepreneur. It just is what it is. It's something of pride. You can take pride in being an entrepreneur, but you have to realize that like, it's super difficult. It's the most difficult thing. Way more difficult than anything else. Way more. Extremely scary. Extremely depressing. Extremely disappointing. Really hard, really hard. And you do not get any credit for showing up. And I think that's true in life, but especially if you're an entrepreneur, like you do not get credit for showing up. Um, I think that in the music world, we need to be more like entrepreneurs. We need to be more focused on like business. Um, that was one of the things that I got very angry about with music. Um, it meaning like I got very angry about the music, the music marketing industry of like YouTube and like the courses and like uh, what other artists would say and just like, it's like all that. I just got really like frustrated with it because I just looked at all of it and I was like, man, you guys are just full of shit. What I love about the business world and especially in the marketing agency world, I really love what we're trying to do. Um, I was, I'm in a, I'm in a uh, coaching program right now for, right, for marketing agencies and like the whole goal is to get to $100,000 a month in revenue. $100,000 per month in revenue. That's dope. Okay, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's good. I hear that and I'm like, yeah, that, that. Um, it makes you raise your 
It made me raise my frequency. It made me raise my expectations. It made me raise what I thought was possible. Because what, what was I hearing before? How to get your first 10,000 followers on Instagram. How to get 100,000 streams. How to get 400,000 streams on Spotify. It's like that doesn't excite me at all. Like those things don't excite me. Even before I had 10,000 followers on IG, that didn't excite me. Always the goal was to make money with music. Not from the beginning. The beginning was express myself. But when it came to like why I'm on YouTube searching for marketing tips, it's all about making money. Like that's what I'm trying to do is make money with music. Well, you need those things to make money. You don't though, that's the thing. I love in the marketing agency world, there's not like, there's some bullshit here and there, but not like in the music, not like in music. In music, there's like, wow. There are legitimately people on on YouTube who are like, who have not made money with music, but they talk about marketing music. It's actually like insane to me. In the, in, in the agency space, it's kind of the same. There's people who like, they're making $20,000 a month with their agency and they make that number sound so big. Like, we're making 20 grand a month. And it's like, it's not that cool of a number. It's not. Um, it's not that good. So it's like, it's all right. It's good. It's good. But like to be, I don't know, like where I look at things, like the way I look at it, I'm like, dude, like you shouldn't be putting out a co coaching, a coaching program and a course if you're doing 20 grand a month. Like that's not shit. There's, there's people out there doing 300,000 a month who are like, I'm not doing a coaching program. And they're like, why would I do it? I'm not, because they don't need, because they're, they're freaking, they know how little they are. Isn't that funny? Isn't that really funny, by the way? The people who are doing bigger numbers are the ones who don't think they're shit. And the people doing the little numbers are the ones who think they're big shit. They, the ones who are doing the little ass numbers are the ones putting themselves up to this pedestal. Like, that that's so cool. Um, and also like, wow, this got way off topic and I don't give a hoot. It's my show. I can do whatever I want. The other thing too is like revenue. Like, like revenue is great. Like revenue is important. Like you need revenue. But I'll give you an example. If you're an agency owner and you're doing 30 grand a month. Oh, cool. But you got 30 clients. That's like, I don't think, I, Lee Litvin, I'm not talking about what is and what isn't. I'm talking about Lee Litvin doesn't think that's cool. I think you're at a great place. I think you're at a great place. Like awesome. But like, you shouldn't go put together a coaching program. You have a ginormous bottleneck in your business that's like obvious as what's in the mirror. Like 30 clients and you're doing 30 grand a month. Like that's, that's, that's way too low ticket. Like for me, I'm looking at that like, like and by the way, I'm not coming from a place of I have a $100,000 a month agency, I don't. But I wouldn't want to own an agency that's doing that. I wouldn't want, I'd rather be where I'm at right now than own that agency. Because like that agency, like that shit ain't scalable. You know how many team members you need to fulfill 30 clients? You have 30 clients, 30 clients. Bro, in my apartment, I don't even think I could fit 30 people in my, in my apartment. I could not fit 30 people in my apartment. I'm like looking around trying to figure out how that would even, like what I'm trying to say is like, you have that many people, dude, you have like a lot of mouths to feed, you have a lot of problems to solve, you have a lot of fires to put out, like nah, like, you got a job. That's fine, by the way. At first, every entrepreneur has a job before they can really own a business. But like, I'm not into that. I don't think that's something to brag about. I don't think that's something to go share. Like, you should share that what you're doing. But I, like people like that sometimes put out courses. Okay, you're doing 20 grand a month. That's great. But like, what's your profit? And then, and that, you know what's funny is I'll ask things like that. Hey, you're doing 100,000 a month. But like, what, what do you take home? Well, we don't share those things because I've never gotten a good reason why people don't share that, by the way. I've never gotten a good reason. Maybe it's a taxes thing. Maybe they want to like, maybe they're doing some little tax evasion bullshit or, or they're trying to write things off. And if they say their take home, they'll get in trouble. I, I don't know, but, but I haven't gotten a good reason as to why people don't just share their profits. You know what I mean? Um, if you have a $100,000 a month agency and you have 20 employees, it's like, wait a minute. You've got 20 employees. Like, huh. I wonder what you're taking home. Like, you might, and it could be just one of these set cases of, like, you're investing. 
<clears throat> so you're not taking home a lot of money now, but you're going to you're going to take home some in the future. Cool. That's what's up. Like that I get that. I want to hear stories though of people who are doing like that 250,000 who work like 6 hours a month and they don't work on their agency cuz they sold it and they have like a, a, like a piece of equity and they're doing like they're taking home 20 grand a month but they barely work. It's like, "Oh yeah, that's sick." Like to me, I'm like 20 grand a month's not humongous. They see People want to use the number 100, 100,000, 150, 200,000 because that's a bigger number and people are like, oh my God, but like, you don't, that's not what you, that's not even close to your take home. The bigger the agency, the bigger the headaches, the more problems you have, the more responsibilities, the more stress you have. That doesn't mean like you're making more money necessarily. There's some people who own um, a $20,000 a month agency who make more money take home than the $100,000 a month agency because to run a $100,000 a month agency, you need more employees and you have smaller profit margins. And then the folks who are doing 20 grand a month, you can do a 20 grand a month agency completely by yourself. You may be one team member or two, and you're getting to take home 10 grand before taxes off like just a couple of clients. Like, that's nice. So when people say, oh, I want to go big, it's like, yeah, but you don't understand. Like, you don't get it. Like, the go, the go big thing, it's like, bro, going big might mean you're going smaller. And going smaller might mean you're actually getting more out of it. So you don't necessarily always want to go bigger. Sometimes you want to take it back. And like, look at, look at everything. That kind of goes back with our last episode, self-awareness. You kind of want to look back and be like, well, what am I really getting out of this? So I guess overall, like this episode went way off. Don't give a shit. It's my podcast. I can do whatever the fuck I want. But this, I like this topic. This is an important topic. It's something on my mind and I'm happy we talked about it. So Last episode was about self-awareness. This episode kind of talked about self-awareness, but essentially the episode was talking about, I kind of got off topic, but it was talking about control what you can control. We got off topic. Cool with me. It works for me. I don't care. It's my podcast, like I said. So um, listen, if you liked this at all, like subscribe to the YouTube channel, comment on this video, like the video. If you're listening to this podcast, leave a rating, leave a review. You know, I know I kind of got off topic. I think there's some value in here too. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure there was. If you're an entrepreneur, I'm pretty sure you're going to get some good value out of it and like it. So anyway, I appreciate you so much. Love you for listening to this and I'll talk to you on the next episode. Peace.